G'day fellas and welcome to another Beyond All Reason video where we're going to be doing an overview of the front line. This has been a hotly requested video. Obviously a lot of the content that we've been doing is focused around the back line, about being greedy. But today we're going to take a look at a frontliner who is a very good player. Now doesn't currently sit on the leaderboard, but still very, very high true skill rating. And that is going to be Spoda Friend. Spoda Friend is, uh, well, I guess he's probably good friends with Spider Friend. And he's going to be playing the frontline position here over on the left hand side of the screen. So without further ado, let's get to it. I'm going to skip the start and jump in. Take a look exactly how he begins. So looks like it's going to be a single mechs opening here. We can see that he's got all three of the mechs is queued up. And we're right on board with his player view here. Now, it's important to note that he is on the edge of the map. The edge of the map is arguably a little bit more sensitive than the center of the map. Just simply because if you make a mistake in the center of the map, there's a lot more people who can cover for you. If, as an example, if you, if you let some units run by, then other people can cover for you. But if you let units run by on the edge of the map, well, there's not really many people who can cover for you. So it's always important to note that you are playing a little bit more of a, a, uh, a difficult position. So it looks like it's going to be a wind opening. Now, one thing to note is wind is quite high for him here. So I suspect he probably would have gone solars uh, if the wind was low. But obviously, with the wind being quite high, he says, you know what? I'm going to go with the wind. So it's going to be three windmills or three wind jams, three wind turbines. There we go. And opening up with a bot lab, which is very standard here. The most common thing that we do see frontliners do is go for an early bot lab, but then reclaim that and then build a vehicle lab a little bit closer to the front line. And we can see that he has got a whole bunch of units queued up inside. So we've got a single tick and three construction bots. He's gone for, like he's changed it. He said, I want two ticks and three construction bots. So we're going to be focusing on two core components of this game. The first part is the base and the second part is the front line. That's going to be it. So th those are two very different things. And we're going to be talking about the roles that he's looking to fulfill here. So as a frontliner, your job is to defend your backline. You want to make sure that your backline's safe so they can focus as much of their energy on just looking at ecoing and getting those T2 units out. But at the same time, it's also about harassing the enemy backliner so that you're keeping them down. We can see that that's what these ticks may look to do here as he comes out and just looks to scout out what's happening in the middle of the map. Behind this, we've seen that he's gone for three construction bots. And any time that he's stalling energy, we can see that he's boosting out these construction units. Any time that he is stalling on energy, he's going to turn around and make a solar collector, which is actually really smart because the solars only cost metal compared to the energy that the wind gens cost. So goes up to a total of two and is now going to begin moving out with the commander. He's going to want to get that commander into the middle of the map very, very quickly. The normal goal that I look for is about four minutes 30. And that's somewhere along this line around here. So we can see the fleas at the moment. He's going to be looking to defend enemy fleas. Let's see if he reacts to that. And look, you can see the reaction immediately. He throws out 10 fleas straight away. Now, one of those first construction bots that we've seen has come over and begun working on energy. This is really important because as the commander moves out across the map, he's not going to be stopping at every single metal deposit. He's just going to be working his way forward. And we can see him on the way up. He's going off and starting at one, two, three, four. He's not going in and out. But at the same time, a little bit of an, a counter-attack over here. And we can see that even though this attack is happening in the middle, he, he is making sure that he covers it. And this is part of being a, a good frontliner because at the end of the day, you're making units and it's your job to try and help clean up this mess. So really well played here by Spoda early on in the game. Um, and now going to be looking to change out the units that he's going for and he's now going to be adding in pawns, which is your your essentially your default infantry unit for the early game here as the arm. Obviously, on the other side, it's going to be the grunts. Uh, we can see him continuing to expand out with the commander and looking to make it towards that front line. It's very key. He wants to try and get up to this position to begin that trench. And ideally on that trench, he's going to be looking to put down laser turrets. Back home though, we see it's going to be the construction turret that comes out. So all three of these construction bots are now going to be focusing on the construction turret. It's around the three minute mark, three minute 30 mark that he's putting it down. And one thing to note is you can see that all of the construction bots are putting down uh, wind turbines within the radius of the construction turret. So it can help boost them up. And we now see that third construction bot beginning to move out. Commander continuing to move forward. We can see he's got that little radar, spots the enemy units on the way in and begins to throw down a second radar or not a, not a second radar, the first radar on the front line. This is going to give him great penetration through to the enemy back line. He'll be able to see exactly where the enemy is and whether he can go for a cheeky little flank, which is exactly what he looks to do here. And he's going to continue pushing up. Remember, you want to try and seal this little, this little jam right here. Uh, we can see those fleas heading up towards that top side. It looks like one might get through and he's going to be able to do some annoying damage back here. If he's lucky, 
Uh, his enemy will clean him up. You can see that we've got a... Oh, oh, there's a rascal that might be able to clean him. And there, there's the rascal, which should be able to catch it. All right, I think... Is, is it the rascal? Yeah, it's the rascal uh, that picks him up. But he manages to almost take out a... a uh, oh my god, this, this, this flea is being very, very annoying here. But it does eventually get cleaned up. Now, back towards the front, we see the commander has moved forward. And he's actually taking very strong position. Now, take a look at one of the ways that he's building this light laser turret. So, he's got the commander in front. And this is designed to protect the light laser turret from the enemy commander because there's always a risk of d-gun now in in the most recent change the d-gun no longer affects the commander so you can really use this to begin pushing uh but you can see that the way that the llts have been positioned uh so that th they've kind of th there's this sort of uh demilitarized zone in the middle that no one's really going to be able to go into at the same time look at this over towards the west side we've got a little bit of a flanking maneuver coming through towards that back now one thing to note is it's going to be the pink player on the back line we're not going to focus too much about what's happening over on the on the east let's let's head back towards the base because there's a lot going on here so it looks like a second construction turret has been thrown down throughout this and still just focusing on those Winjen. you could see wiggy his opponent in this lane saying we are losing this lane a hundred percent by the way blind uh so blind is going to be his his laning partner in the back there blind fish as a, as a commander goes down and this becomes quite pertinent because if that commander goes down which it, it has and that's fireball's commander then that's going to mean that there is a bit of a gap here that now Spodafrane is going to have to come out and cover. So obviously his main goal is to stop any attacks from his lane. C try and think about it as four lanes. So if I was going to draw this, I'm, I'm going to pause it right now just to explain the, the, the concept of lanes. If you're familiar with League of Legends or Dota 2, you'll, you'll understand pretty well. But basically the way it works is you've got the, these these two sides of the field, right? Where you're going to have, uh, you've got the good guys down here and you've got the bad guys over there. And within that, you've got lanes. So as an example, Spodafrane's lane uh, might end around here and and then fireballs lane may end around here and that's his in the middle and then you can see we've got serious bot who might take over to here uh, and then over on the edge of the map you can see we've got uh, a, a tradies who's, who's going to be having you know this position right here now obviously these aren't exact uh the, these can change around you know maybe you've got something like that where where this lane can extend out over towards that position or something along those lines but essentially each player has got a a lane that they are looking to fight down oh i didn't mean to draw a label right there each player's got a lane that they're looking to fight down and looking to try and protect obviously uh these guys i've given them a little bit a uh, little bit too little uh and now all of a sudden that's going to mean so if you've got your lane here uh that you're protecting well now all of a sudden this is a potential avenue for attack from the enemy so it means that this is something that he's got to be very aware of and, and thinking about and i wouldn't be surprised to see spodafran come out here and look to drop some llts down uh over on the edge here just just to try and defend against any attacks so at, at the early stages in in this sort of tier one war the light laser turrets or the sentries are going to be really important to maintain control of the ground. They used to do a lot of damage to the commander, but it's been nerfed significantly. We can see Spodafren starting to push up here, and he's actually in a 2v1 situation here. So Blindfish is starting to make, make units, and Wiggy is also making units. If we check his ally, his ally is T2. He's got plenty of advanced solar collectors out. He's having a field day back here. He is not helping one bit. So Spodafren is really carrying. But one thing to be careful of is overextension, especially if you're going to attract enemies. If you start to attract enemies, you're going to put yourself in a spot where you're maybe 1v2 or 1v3, and that's going to mean that your position will start to weaken. So you've got to be careful not to overextend, uh, but obviously we do want to try and take as much map control as we can, and we can see him continuing to push up here. Let's head back to the base quickly just to get a bit of an idea on where he's at. A couple of idle construction bots for the moment, uh, so not going to be throwing down. How, ma how many have we got in total of these uh, of the wind turbines? So 26 with the two solar collectors, so not too bad. And keep in mind he's sent forward a construction bot to come in and fill that back line. And there we can see that vehicle lab going to be going down. So Commander not going to be moving back for it. You can see he's actually... Oh God, there's so much going on right now in this game. So I do apologize because as a, as a backliner, my specialty is not, uh, not frontlining. And it's difficult for me to make a cohesive... Uh, I guess, examination of what's happening here because there's so many things. Now, one of the things that he's done is he's sent metal over to Kermit Slayer. He said, hey, mate, I, I want a tier two bot. Uh, and that's essentially what he's done. So basically, Kermit Slayer hasn't reclaimed his bot lab yet. And he's going to be able to provide a tier two bot, which is going to help him uh, buff up. Or essentially, what he wants to do is straight away, you can see the metal extractor. He wants to start improving these immediately. Uh, so that's what he's going to look to do here. Uh, and that's going to really increase that metal income, which is what the main focus is. Meanwhile, on the front line, we can see that we, we are falling back to towards this position he is going to be throwing down some construction turrets 
and it's still pushing up towards this this central location. A couple of units do go through, but they do go down. And we can see now there is a third player that's going to be joining. Looks like just a couple of, uh, maybe a, uh, not, not a grunt, but a, uh, what, what are they called? The, these little guys right here, the, the pawns, so, uh, going to be coming out. So now we see our, our, I guess our, our next level of units. So just to explain a couple of things, because I know that there's going to be people that are new to this game. Uh, and there's of course going to be plenty of experienced people who are going to know exactly what I'm talking about. But you know, it's important that we, we cover this for everybody. So now the Rocketeer is going to be coming out. These guys used to be called the Roccos back in, uh, in Total Annihilation. And these guys specialize in dealing with static defense, but only the tier one static defense. So if you've got any of those sentries or the big, you know, the Gat guns, the, the ones that shoot the green lasers, these guys aren't going to work, but they work perfectly against these turrets. Now, on the other side, we can see that the thugs are starting to come out, or I think they're called thugs now. Yeah, the thugs are coming out. These guys are really good at pushing. They're kind of, I guess you could say they're like pawns, but a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, slower, a lot, a lot, and a lot more strong. Um, and they do have a lower range than the Rocco, uh, but ideally what you want to be doing is just microing the same way uh, that Wiggy is microing at the moment, doing a really good job to get out that damage uh, on Spodafran. And you, you definitely want to be, if, you're, if your plan is to stay playing bots, you do want to transition into the thug uh, towards the, the, the middle of tier one, I, I would be saying. I'd be curious to know, because keep in mind, I, I, when it comes to this game, beyond all reason, I'm not an expert yet. So I, I'm just going on what I've seen. If, if you if you disagree with anything I've said, please leave it down in the comments and I will make sure to, to read that and feed it back. But Spoda Friend, overextending a little bit here, going against the 3v1. We see pink, we see red, we see white, pushing through the Fidos, aka the Hounds, are going to be coming in and doing a lot of damage. We're at eight minutes. So this is a tier two push coming out right now. And we can see that, that Spooder is going to do his best to try and cover this angle. And this is why we transition into the, the vehicles. The reason we, trans we transition into the vehicles is because they have a tier 1.5 option that is a very mobile unit. So unlike the Centurion, these guys move quite quickly, the Stouts. Very good at defending against something like the Hound uh, because the Hounds are, are, are quite quick uh, to begin taking over. And we can see he's struggling to put any pressure on here. Obviously, he hasn't committed to a huge amount of Hounds. Uh, but looks like he probably will. And now we can see the communication going to come out. So um, let me turn this sound down a little bit. And let's uh, let's get some music on. So you can see that he's communicating. Help 3v1. Now, I'm just going to pause it because this is really important to note. He's 3v1. He's quite literally 3v1. Okay? It's only him. And he's up against three people. Now, a lot of people might look at that and go, that that's, that's a bad deal. You know, if we're talking about trade deals, this is one of the worst of all times. Probably. But. Let's think about it from the perspective of what has he bought his backline? Well, he's bought his backline space. His backline is now throwing down a fusion. He's got all of the maxes up, sold the T2, has passed out T2s over to allies, and now they're working on their own T2. When it comes to this gentleman over here, armed but blind, now granted he's not the best player, uh, but he has bought him space as well. Because we need to consider the fact that the red player is going to be the, this sort of T2 support player on, on the back in the middle. So he's bought him plenty of space. Uh, or bought, bought both of these players plenty of space. And let, let's compare the pair, all right? So now let's go and compare what Blindfish has done. Now, keep in mind, Blindfish has been pumping out vehicles nonstop. Well, Blindfish, he doesn't even have T2 here. There's, there's not even a sign of T2 here. All, all that he's got back here is a tier one vehicle plan. There's no fusion. There, there's a couple of nanos. That's about it. There's not a whole lot of stuff here. When we check out the red base... He's got the tier two, but even then he's only working on tier two mexes at the moment. No sign of a fusion. Hasn't passed out. He may have passed out tier two bots. We can we can have a look. You can see he's passed, passed one out right now to Blindfish. Uh, we can see one that's come out. Th this has come out from uh, this this player here. Uh, it doesn't look like we've got T2 at the front here. Uh, definitely won't have T2 over here. The point is that even though he's 3v1 and he needs help, that 3v1 has bought his backliners a huge amount of space, a huge amount of time. So this is a, a really decently played opening by him. Even though he's over-invested in his position, even though he's lost his commander, he still bought a lot of space for the backline. And that's going to give him or give his backline the opportunity to come and help him out uh, right when they need to. And it also gives them the opportunity to have invested in their economy. Just, just to pause it once again, as, as, as I said, right? Like if you can get to a fusion and then start making units, you're going to be able to make a lot more units than the guy who's just been sitting there sitting on, on wind turbines for the last 10 minutes. So it, it's really about this whole putting the pedal to the metal as long as you can and then only taking it off when you have to. Even on the front line, we see that same 
uh, sort of philosophy being emulated to an extent, or not necessarily being emulated, but supporting that idea, that concept. So let's keep moving. Let's focus in on exactly what he's going to do to defend here, because Spider's in a little bit of a, a little bit of a difficult position here, and you can see that now the vehicles have begun transitioning. He's, we, we can see the probably the most notable vehicle of the Tier 1, uh, which is going to be these Tier 1 artilleries, and these outrange pretty much every static defense that you've got available to you, with the exception of the, uh, is it the, the, the Punisher, I think it might be called? Uh, which is the the long range plasma the this bad boy right here go the gauntlet so with the exception of the gauntlet you outrange absolutely everything here uh with the light artillery and this is really what uh is is quite an important thing to uh take advantage of uh when, when you're playing into vehicles excuse me for moving the camera like that still you're still wrapping my head around the uh the sensitivity of of this uh of the mouse but uh so He's lost the front completely. He's lost the vehicle plant. He's lost all the nanos. And now he's going to have to fall back. And we can see that he's done a pretty decent job with the T2 back home. So he's got all three of the uh, of the advanced mexes online, which I'm kind of start tempted to start calling Amexes. I know that that's a little bit weird, but it just kind of makes sense, right? Like me mex means metal extractor. That's why we call it a mex. Uh, and then advanced metal extractor, it would a Amex. You got it? Anyway, uh, don't get confused. That, that, um, that's what I'm going to start doing it. I don't know if people are already doing it, but I'm going to start doing it. Vehicle lab going to get the vehicle plant going to get thrown down on the backside. And straight away, we see a whole bunch of stouts just getting rushed out back here. Obviously, he needs to support the front line. He's lost it. Uh, and I, I think the most important thing at this time is, is to just keep a cool head, right? Don't, don't start blaming the friends. Ask for help. Really, really important. Ask for help. Ping it out. Make sure you get attention because now we can see that Sirius Bot is starting to help out. Remember, he's got his own lane over here, which, by, by the way, like w w when we talk about like static defenses, this is a great example of a static defense line. We've got our, L our sentries on the front. Uh, we've got a radar. We've got a sneaky Pete. And we've got a whole bunch of our construction turrets back here. Now, we don't yet see the advanced uh, ad advanced laser turrets yet, like the GAT guns, or the, what are they called there? I apologize if I refer to these these TA names, guys, by the way. Uh, I, 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 let me... It's still a bit finicky right there. Uh, the Overwatch. Um, but we do see them starting to come up over on the enemy side. We can see right now the Warden is going to be coming down here for Compa. Uh, so he's going to be looking to throw that down. So let's ride back on board with our hero of the day, Spider Friend as once again he tries to hold on for dear life as there is a really big push coming in you can really see the emphasis on stouts here both of these players are going to be going into stouts and serious bot saying we need more units at the front which is really important to com communicate and we can now see that t2 has been remade so back here kermit slayer has sold the t2 he's remade it and now we have some uh gunslingers coming out gunslinger bots one of the be the gr greatest units uh the the uh, the maverick as it used to be known such a classic unit uh, really, really powerful once it once it gets out in these early stages and should be able to put out a lot of damage. But we can see that the way that Spoda friend is coming back here, looking to try and defend this position, still spamming out units, looking to go into some energy as well, but really relying on the allies here because obviously he's been 3v1, but now it's time for them to come online. We can see that Armed But Blind is also going to be coming online. A big, big lot of fat boys coming out right now. He's got one, two in the queue. It's, uh, it's a whole bunch of fat boys. One of the... One of the uh, the, the most interesting additions to bar, I will say that much. It, it is, well, let's just put it this way. I don't like it when my allies make fat boys. Those things, they hurt. Uh, and they, they, yeah, they, they are the fleas' worst enemy. And it's, uh, it's, it's your fleas that they're, they're the worst enemy of. They're, they're terrible. It's uh, very frustrating. But a little bit of a switch up on the back here. We can see he's reclaimed the vehicle lab, now thrown down a bot lab, uh, and, and got a whole bunch of Lazarus out. So going to be looking to get some reclaim off on the front, maybe do a little bit of... Uh, do a little, little bit of uh, resurrecting and speaking of resurrection or, or reclaiming here we go some Lazarus out over on the east side and this is something that we haven't really talked a lot about reclaim one of the most important things that you can do on the front line is reclaiming looking to try and take advantage of the metal that's out here you take a look at this we've got 135 metal that sits in here and boom it's just gone straight over to demonizer so unfortunately wasn't paying attention lost the Lazarus in one foul swoop but now we've got a whole bunch of fiends looking to come down and break through keep in mind over towards the center We've, we've got more coverage coming out. We've got Spoda that is looking to try and cover this position. Looks like Sirius Bot going to be losing his commander. So the fronts are really beginning to fall at this point. And it really just becomes a consequence of having to cover over on this west side. So it may just be that uh, that our back lines didn't help out as much as they should have. I mean, Armed But Blind is only really helping out with some really slow units, which are great when you've got these, these positions set up. 
Uh, but when, when, you've, when you're dealing with something like hounds, the best response is probably just hounds for yourself, just so that you can cover the movement speed. And we can see the Stouts now going to be looking to close the gap on those hounds and force them back. And you can see the way that he's cutting them off, making sure he's not going directly into the fight, but just preventing them from aggressing any further so that those hounds are going to kind of be stuck around here. And he's looking to try and get the surround here. More units coming in from that west side. Still a couple units up towards the top as well. Uh, but he, he's trying his best just to, tr to prevent them from breaking through because once they break through, once they get to the back line, that's when the real damage is going to get done. But it looks like it will happen. We can see that, that Fireball going for a ghost here. Might be lucky to get two or three. Yeah, gets, gets three of the hounds. So not too bad. Uh, of an effort there, but it looks like we've got a couple of welders going to be coming out here as well. But the hounds are making their way back, and all of these units finally going to be coming out here for Armored But Blind. Actually, he did go for a few spiders a bit earlier. I, I will take that back. He did make some spiders over here. Uh, so he is definitely making units. Um, so we can see that the, the hounds are running out of space, though. And you can see he's, he's now going to be moving over towards that east base. And it doesn't really look like there's much to cover it, but there are hounds now. So as long as everyone's pinging and communicating, we're all going to be fine. Uh, when dealing with that. But now back towards the base, Spider Friend. Let's see exactly how he's doing as he goes for a T2. So going into the T2 bot lab here, not going for the T2 vehicles and starting to throw down a lot more nanos. Now we look at the front line and what has he done? He's made a whole bunch of Amexes towards this front line. He has kept it going. Every single metal extractor he's got, he has upgraded to the Amex. Looking to looking to throw down a couple of pit bulls on the front, but retreats back for the moment. I guess a little bit fearful uh, about these attacks continuing to come through. But let's take a look down on this south side as he has got some decent coverage here with a whole bunch of grunts just chilling out. Or sorry, a whole bunch of pawns just chilling out for the moment. And now we'll head back onto that front line and, and take a look at exactly what the plan is. You can see he's going to be transitioning into the advanced construction bot. Obviously, he's already been given a, a, a construction bot a little bit earlier. Uh, and we see it looks like we've got some butlers beginning to come out. So these guys are going to be able to help and get some build power out onto the field. Keep in mind, there's a couple of really important uh, buildings that you want to be making on the front line. Uh, most notably, you want to be going for a rattlesnake. Rattlesnakes are really strong. Uh, Pop-up, uh, plasma, artillery, uh, a really, really strong unit. And we can now see that to an extent, Spider Friend is relying on his allies. He's relying on his, his allies to help push back on this position. The recluse doing a, a pretty good job. He's also got the, the hounds up here helping out. But the front has been completely lost. And if we take a look at the enemy front, remember that the enemy front is maintained. They've still got all of this all of this metal that is back here. And if we take a look right now at the difference between income, you can see that there's about a 40, 30 to 40 gap between these two guys or between these two teams. And that is just largely attributed to the fact that you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All of these mexes are not gathering because they've all been killed because the front line has, has fallen. So a, a really important... I guess, reminder or, or a, a really important uh, point to make is just, you know, you backliners out there, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you come from. Just watch out for your frontliners, all right? And, and I appreciate you want to greed. Speaking of greed, it uh, looks like we've got the second fusion reactor coming down here. But speaking of, of, of greed, we've got our first fusion reactor now coming down for Spider Friend. Now, one thing to note is I'm, I'm sure a lot of you aspiring frontliners might be thinking at this point, well, you know, maybe it's time to focus a little bit more on my economy. And I think that that's a, a really relevant point, but it's also important to remember that our economy on the front line should be incremental because we should always be making units. So one of the best things that you can do is avoid going for an APHIS until you've hit maybe around three to four fusion reactors. Once you've got the third or the fourth fusion reactor, then you can start looking to go for your own APHIS. But before then, it's going to really hurt you sinking all of that build power into an APHIS and waiting so long for the payoff. A couple of Jaguars looking to come through right now. Not going to be able to find too much presence here as the Hounds are out. One of the best early tier 2 bots. And look at this. A little bit of a breakthrough starting to happen now. Once again, remember that the the obligation of the front line is not only to secure uh, the run buys from the enemy, but also to make it happen uh, on the enemy side. And we can see that there's a bit of an attempt now uh, for that to come through. And now on the front line, there it is. The Rattlesnake going to be coming up. So it's the cloakable pop-up plasma artillery. Uh, an incredibly strong... Um, unit here and we can see he's got a lot of uh what are, how much have we gotten here we got three construction bots we got five butlers so he went up to five butlers and the advanced construction bot all coming out onto the front line here to help out with the rattlesnake and once the rattlesnake is up you can see the range on the rattlesnake here i'll, I'll draw it out for you it's all the way back here so if we have a look exactly what that what the front line hits it hits absolutely everything now of course there is a sneaky pete as long as he spots that out though he should be fine let me how do i get rid of you there we go 
So as, as long as he's able to to roughly know where those things are, he can just he can just attack, move, or or, or hit hit the fire uh, button in that area. But uh, obviously he's he's exposing that, and he's going to be able to clear that out. Now behind this, he's going to begin adding in advanced metal extractors once again. Let's check back in on the base. We can see that the fusion is complete. He's going to be throwing down advanced energy converters. Uh, and I suspect that there's now going to be a transition away from uh, wind turbines and advanced solar collectors. So expect to see him start reclaiming these and expect to see a lot more fusions beginning to go down. Remember that the efficiency on fusions is a lot better. Uh, than your advanced solar collector. Uh, at least if I remember correctly, let's have a look. 4,300 metal uh, per 1,000 uh, energy compared to... What are we What are we running here? Let me see if I can find a construction bot here. 370 uh, for 75. So yeah, if we do 3,700, 3, you're only hitting 750 energy. Uh, so it's, it's actually pretty close. It's pretty damn close uh, when it comes to the advanced solar and the, and the fusion. Uh, but I, I think the fusion is still going to be slightly ahead of it. But I, I'd have to double check my numbers. So anyway, we're, we're back to square one. What's square one? It's re-establishing the front. We always have to remember it is our job as the front line to maintain the front. We want to make sure that we're holding on at the front. That it, it's not the job of, of our back line to come up here and say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go up to the front and I'm, I'm going to start building. I mean, to an extent it is, uh, if, if that's going to cause you to lose the game. But the main focus should be for those front liners to be getting out here. Start putting these static defense down. We can see now all the Sheldons starting to come out. At least what I suspect are Sheldons. Uh, we can tell by the way that they're moving. No, it's actually going to be the mobile artillery. Uh, so the, the Maus is coming out. Uh, very, very similar units, I guess, uh, realistically. Um, but we do now start to see more and more, uh, more and more... Uh, I think these, this is called uh, static defense, but often people will call it porking. Uh, I'm assuming it's to do with like porcupines, uh, porking. Um, so some pit bulls coming down now. So pit bulls, obviously a, a really, really uh, famous rapper, but also an incredibly strong static defense uh, item. So we do see the, the two pit bulls now coming out on the front. These guys have got some pretty decent range as well. You can see they fully cover the pass here. Um, and that, that's all he's looking to do. And now we've got the, the take on or the take, the take on the take on the, the, the annihilator. It's, it's the annihilator that doesn't have to pop up. It's a significantly better improved version of the annihilator. Uh, one, of, one of the best uh, defensive tools that you can use very difficult to stop this and it, it, it's interesting the way that it sort of works in that the, the there are different levels to to your static defense right like you've got your light laser turret that loses out to the thug uh and then the thug will lose out to your warden and then the warden's going to lose out to the light artillery but the light artillery loses out to the the plasma and then the plasma is going to be losing out to I, I i guess it probably loses out to the rattlesnake uh which then obviously loses out to the pulsar and then the pulsar finally loses out to like uh, tactical nukes uh, and also loses out to um, your intimidators or your long range plasma cannons we can see already on the other side it looks like we've got some pulsars that are online yeah back back here so one of the things that you will see players look to do is do a pulsar creep which is where you slowly push forward with your pulsars using the maximum range here we can see that these guys ex they extend very very far back and you can begin to push forward with these guys so you start off with one here and then move forward a little bit further a little bit further just keep creeping forward like that and as long as you've got units to defend it that's a real key factor we need to make sure that we have a combination of units and uh, our static defense we can't just go all static defense i mean you're probably oh my, my god did you see the amount of damage that pulsar just did oh <laughs> it is not a good time to be whatever that was uh they, they were some fiends my lord they got blasted to hell and high heaven that was a lot of damage uh that <laughs> you came to the wrong neighborhood fiends you came to the wrong neighborhood all right let's let's watch on with uh with spider friend and see how he's doing as the pulsar is is looking to start Dishing out some damage early on in this game. Now, I don't know if there's a way to track kills, but I, I reckon that bo that bad boy just killed like 15 units in a single shot. I tell you what, that is uh, that is impressive to say the least. So we can see that he, he started to also clean up or, or establish the position a little bit wider as well. Keeping in mind that down towards the south side, fireball's not really helping out that much. We can see that, I mean, he, he's already gone for an Aphis, and that's pretty early to go for an Aphis on the front line. He's going for a second Aphis back here. Uh, ju just, uh, I mean, a little bit of uh, feedback. 
avoid making those aphises for a little bit longer. Go into the fusions. We can see that there's already two fusions down here now uh, for Spider. So if he went into an aphis here, I think that'd be reasonable. We actually see the aphis is getting thrown down. Oh, th th never mind. He's going into the third fusion, and then we'll be going into the aphis, which is definitely the right call. Uh, always looking to add in the the uh, about three to four fusions. You can even go up, up a little bit more than that when you're making units, just because there's a little bit more of an incremental bonus. Uh, but now we see an interesting development. As, as the front line continues to develop, uh, we see an EMP. So EMP tactical launcher uh, coming on the front line. So can look to utilize this against the enemy position. Obviously, if he wants to go for a push or if he wants to go for a defense, we'll have that option. Meanwhile, I, I, so j just to explain the, the reason why we, we don't go for the Aphis, uh, for anybody wondering, or we don't go for the Aphis early, straight away. The fusion, the cost of it is significantly less than the Aphis. 4,300 metal against 9,700 metal. More than double. Now, of course, it's a better deal, but you've got to wait longer for that deal. And especially when you're making units, you're going to be waiting even longer. So you want to do everything that you can to make sure that your economy stays kicking. And that's why it's important that you go for those fusions early. Big shots coming through, and it looks like uh, a, a nice little uh, radar bot explosion in there, maybe, or it could have been uh, something else, but I think it was a radar bot that does the explosion and, and takes out all of these Sheldons on the back line. And now, now we've got the Pulsar just cleaning house on, on that front line. Beautiful little position that he's got back here. And take a look at this. Arbalist's now coming in. And take a look at the position that he's got. One of the things that I said earlier is playing on... Oh, beautifully done. One of the things that I said earlier is playing on the west side or playing on the flanks like this, on the edges, you've got to be a little bit more careful because the when it comes to run buyers, you're really the only person that can help. Obviously, your backliner can is quite close as well, uh, but realistically, you know, you're not you're not going to get help from from this side. Whereas if in the, if it's in the middle, it's different. And one of the things that players often look to exploit is aircraft along the edge of the map here. So one of the best things that you can do, uh, even as a backliner, is look to position uh, some arbalists along the edge of the map because it is inevitable that there is going to be a a bombing run attempt on that position. And you're just very easily going to be able to shut it down as long as you've got those arbalists in position ready to take them down. And you can see just how much damage they're able to do just taking out the plane. It looks like it's got full health as it goes down, but obviously it doesn't. The arbalist has, has absolutely destroyed it. And now those take ons continuing to move forward. You can see the crawl is happening. So we're up to... He's, he's gone and he started with one and now he's up to four and continues to move forwards with this. I wouldn't be surprised if he like comes down on another angle, like maybe around on this angle here. Really, really strong. Uh, units and great at covering themselves as well. That's another thing to note. Uh, but let's let's check in because we've got the EMP missile launcher uh, that is yet to get a stockpile through. And on the front line, we've got the, the dragon's claws that are beginning to pop up. One of the things that we haven't really talked about yet are dragon's teeth. Uh, I don't know if we've seen too many dragon's teeth out this game. Uh, sometimes you do see players go for like early dragon's teeth, but not always the most effective unit. They, they can be pretty easily overrun with like a T2 bull or something like that. Um, and But I mean, they're good, they're good at holding on early. Let's just put it that way, which is what, what their main focus is. Uh, so big air is now starting to come out here. So we see that that's going to be from the pink player, who's the same player that is, uh, is in uh, Spider's lane. And uh, that, that means that there is going to be uh, some pretty big big presence, I would suspect, along this west side of the map. So we can see back behind this that there is indeed an Arbalist that's now been made back here, nice and safe. These guys have got a pretty decent range as well, so they're going to be able to, to continue shooting it at those planes before any real damage can be done. You can see that they, they'll be able to cover all the way back into the base. And the first Aphis is up, and now we focus on... And th there's the attack coming through. So let's see if he, any damage is able to be done here. Bomber's going to continue running past. You can see all those anti-air uh, uh, bots are, are going to be helping out. And now onto the back line, we can we can watch as the Arbalist continues to focus down those bombers. And they're not even going to be able to make it through. Just completely getting shredded there. Uh, and really, really solid defense coming in from Spider. And great just awareness of what was likely to happen this game. So really smart moves. On the front line a little bit more of a focus on build power now. So it could be looking at a potential T3 play here. He's on 100 and, 185, 195 uh, metal uh, per second, which is more than enough uh, to support T3. So he could be looking to do that. Maybe go into a Razorback or two. Definitely going to be uh, quite helpful. But the, look at the, the take-ons just, or the, the Pulsars just pushing up like this at the moment, doing a really good job. Look, take a look what the enemy's got. How many how many units are we talking out here? This is, this is a fair amount of butlers. Uh, nine butlers to help out building these. These are coming up pretty quickly. People's going to be able to help out can see those fleas now getting spammed so expect to see the uh expect to see the junos coming out shortly 
And look, just look at the pulsars. Look at look at the range on them. Just how far they're able to shoot. And there's the long range plasma cannon now finally coming in over here on the east side. So it's going to be the basilisk uh, that looks to try and take out this position. And this is where it gets really hard for Spider because he's holding on for dear life and he's under threat from multiple different aspects uh, in this game. Uh, so let's go. Let's head into player view. And you can see there's a bit of a breakthrough now on this back line. A whole bunch of fiends back here. And take a look at this. The fat boy's breaking through. It's, it's a classic combo. The fat boy plus the recluse. I don't think I've ever seen this before. What do we got here? Fat boy wreckage. Really? <laughs> so many fat boys. I guess these guys probably probably took their own lives. Poor fat boys. Uh, they, they, they've got a tendency to do that. Uh, so I get the next focus is, is going to be on the back line and talking about... Well, not the back line, but the back home and what, what the goal is. So we can see here that Spider is starting to scale. Even though he's frontline, he still knows that he needs to carry. And it's very difficult to carry from the front line, just very very much so because your ability to scale is significantly hampered uh, by the fact that you've got to be focused on the front line. Whereas your backliner has had all game to scale. Now, whether they know how to scale is a different question. As we can see right here, unfortunately, Kermit Slayer hasn't been watching the uh, the Aussie Drongo videos on on going for greed in the back of the base here. We can see he's, he's made some, you know, th these. this is, as an example, what we want to do here is reclaim our fusions and put that metal into our Aphis. But ideally, at this point, you're at th about 30 minutes. I I'd be hoping you'd be on at least 10 plus Aphis on the back line here. Uh, and when your front line is, is out booming you, that's where it's like, well, maybe we, we could have added more economy this game. But that's also to say that, that Spoda Friend's doing a great job here uh, in, in his own boom as well. And one thing to note, he's still got these fusions that he hasn't actually eaten up yet, even though that, that would definitely provide him a significant amount of metal. Uh, but the, the pushback is, has been pretty decent. They've managed to make it quite far back, but some Sars are going to come out now and should be able to deal with these fleas. But just like the fat boys, they, they are prone to hurting their friends and their allies, their colleagues. But now back towards this other side, or towards this front line. Some pinpoint is going to be going down here. Throwing a lot of stuff down on this front line. Some beam is going to be coming up as well. Making sure to, to throw down these, just in case any of these ticks get close. But look at the, the pulsar, how quickly it's able to just dispatch of anything on the front line. Continuing to push up with these pulsars. And you can see just how small these increments are. Making sure he's continuing to add them on the other side. How many pulsars are we up to? Four, five, six... That's going to be the seventh pulsar. Really well played, but EMP goes off. Looks like that might have been the EMP missile that went that uh, that hit right there. A little bit of a uh, little bit of a glitch there. Uh, so managed to hit the EMP missile, and we can see that they're going to be out of out of action for another twenty seconds. So still some time, but not a whole lot to actually take it out. Not a lot to run through because remember the, remember these guys are covered by the pulsars on the back line and there's more pulsars over here. It's just at this point, a beautiful combination now coming out as well here from Rockfish. We see a classic combination, uh, the uh, the Mauser, the Bull, as well as the uh, the Penetrator or the Starlights uh, back here. And I love the addition of the Razorback as well. Just a really strong combo that's just going to be able to take out everything uh, for, from a range or anything that gets close. Uh, and now we do see T3 coming in for Spider. So his economy is definitely in a great place. He's obviously scaled well back home. He's on the three Aphis now and added in an additional uh, couple of energy converters, advanced energy converters. Uh, but once again, he's still got a lot of metal in this base that he could be looking to uh, to to reclaim. So I'm, I'm hoping to see him do that. He's thrown down his own anti-nuke as well. Uh, just because you can never you can never be too sure when it comes to anti-nukes. Always important to try and get, get them out early. But we do see... It looks like it's going to be he's going to be going into a Thor here. So Thor definitely going to be quite decent uh, against these pulsars. Keep in mind that the Thor has access to an EMP itself. Uh, and so you can just wait for it, wait for the EMP to come online, and then you begin pushing out EMP the back line, and you should just be able to go through, as well as it's got that arc lightning that will begin arcing to all of the units that are crumbled up here. And another really nice combination that we see coming out, it's going to be the welders together with the sharpshooters on the back um, that are, are really strong. The welders create a great front line, clear up a lot of these uh, these smaller units, and the, the, uh, the back line is very well dealt with. But we got a bombing run coming in. It looks like it's going to hit the tier two. If he takes out the tier two, it's going to be a huge loss for him. Uh, but met, fortunately, the Arbalist on the backside able to clean it up. So he will be able to reclaim it uh, if, if he chooses, if he so pleases. Did lose a fair bit of uh, build power here as well. And the obviously the T3 is now going to get exposed, which means that the enemy can begin looking to push into that. And we can see that there's quite a push that's beginning to happen. Looks like our, our, uh, our backline has finally come online with a couple of hounds over on this east side. But 
Unfortunately, it's going to have to very quickly head back towards his base because this push coming out from yellow is really impressive. Can we just take a look at Rockfish right now? I'm going to check the stats. Rockfish, 7.7 .7 million, million energy and 204k. Uh, for, so he, he is uh, he went very heavy eco. Uh, maybe maybe we should have been watching Rockfish. Look at this. He's uh, Is that Rockfish or is this? No, that, that's not Rockfish. This is Rockfish. Rockfish is the frontliner and he's actually carrying his team when it comes to eco. So... I guess it definitely shows that you don't have to be backline to carry. As long as you know how to scale, that's really what's going to determine whether you're able to carry or not. Because we can see right now that, that Rockfish is doing a really good job of with this push here. And it's this classic three-unit composition. The Bulls, the Mausers, together with the Starlights. Really, really effective at dealing with any threat. Uh, and you just got to make sure that you keep your units up uh, to, to a, a pretty decent... Look at all the radar jammers he's got out here. Why do we have this many radar jammers? And look at this, focusing on the T3. And we can see the Thor does get out now uh, for Spider. Uh, he's going to be looking to try and head over towards the enemy backline, I, I would suspect. Uh, let's, let's see how much damage he can do. He's going to turn around. Still nothing in the stockpile just yet, waiting on that EMP missile to come out. But obviously going to be losing his own front line. Let's see, he does fire off his own EMP, trying to probably deal with it, this this big bulk of units. Where does he go? Indeed, he does go right on top of it, but misses absolutely everything, unfortunately. So, doesn't leave him with much space at this point. We'll take a look back on the back line. Uh, as T3 is now coming up, and indeed he's going to be going into battle mechs. And look at all of the butlers he's got. He has got... How many butlers are we talking right here? This is a ridiculous 23 butlers all just crowded around like, we will help you. We will help you, battle mech. Uh, but uh, you can see the Thor... Uh, at this point, it definitely feels like Spider just kind of knows that it's all over Red Rover from this point. Like, ob obviously he's trying to fight back, trying his best to fight back. Uh, but when it just comes to the control of the map, his enemies at quite an advantage. Let's compare the economies. Uh, so we've got 69k on the top side versus 63k. And 1.3k metal versus about 1, 1 to 1, 1.1. So still very, very close. Uh, e even though there's a distinct difference in map control, the, the economies are still pretty damn close at this point. I, I, I wouldn't give a, a clear advantage to either team when it comes to economies, but obviously when it comes to position in this game, uh, the, the back line is, is ripe for a bombing at this point. There's just, there, there's there's no air wall that's up at the moment. Uh, and I, I'm actually curious, do we have any air that's coming out on that other side? We do actually have some big air coming through. Doesn't look like there's a huge amount of, uh, of bombers just yet. Oh, geez, I tell you what, that, that wasn't the way I... I planned it to go. So it looks like just some Avengers out at the moment. Some some Valiants. Uh, and uh, and more SARS coming out. Just just pumping them out. Negotiators as well. And look at the start of the SAR push. This is going to be really difficult to deal with. Especially even with battle mechs. Uh, but uh, yeah, the T3 now. At, at, at this point, it, just, it feels like you're just getting crowded in upon. A very difficult position to come back from. Your, your, one, your one starlight shot away from annihilation here. You know, one Starlight comes through and hits the, these nanos and it's just boom, boom, boom. All of these go up. You lose your build power. Build, build, I almost say build powder again. Uh, your build power. Uh, and then by the same token, these energy converters go. It's all of these gone. Uh, but the SARS now coming through and you can see how much they're just ripping holes uh, in these... Uh, I was going to call them Goliaths. Uh, but uh, in, in these Razorbacks here. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, managing to hold on pretty well. The, these tanks are almost like 2.5 tanks. They're, or tier 2.5. Very, very strong. Uh, but yeah, at, at this point, it's it's pretty much good game here. So obviously we don't have a victory here. And I don't think there's any real clear message to come out from this. But obviously this has been a breakdown in the way um, that the front line looks. We, we, we took apart exactly what, what the whole goal is. The main goal is obviously to come out and to establish that control, to establish that beachhead. And there's the raid coming in, the air raid. A couple of... Uh, these advanced core, I don't know what they're called. There, there they are, the dragons coming along the edge of the map, the high winds or, or valiant's going to be able to back them up. And as long as this fusion goes down, that's going to be a good game because it's going to be boom, boom, boom. Just like the Venga boys from 2002, it is going to be absolute explosions everywhere inside the room of Spider Friend. And a whole bunch of hurricanes also coming in, uh, or, or hailstorms coming in to, uh, to finish it all off. And there it goes, ladies and gentlemen. That is the game uh, in, a <laughs> in a very quick, uh, in a very quick, uh, attack from air able to finish off that game but it wouldn't have mattered anyway i mean the, ga the game was completely over and we can see that spider even calling out i was playing front versus three a little bit of a tough game for him but honestly he did pretty well uh in in his position i'm gonna say that much he, he did a pretty decent job playing that 3v1 so in the end he gathered 9 million metal oh sorry 9 million energy 254k metal 
Uh, his nearest opponent was 12.5 metal, or 12.5 million, rather, uh, energy, and 292. So his boom was pretty good. I would say that their backlines, uh, or, or all the backlines in general, didn't really have that much of a greedy boom. Um, it, it, backlines seemed very involved in this game uh, compared to the games that I'm used to watching. You know, your typical MBT games, uh, those sorts of things. Uh, but that's going to be it. Uh, I'm curious what you guys think about this this style of, of uh, video. Obviously, we did a similar one with MBT booming down in this corner. Uh, so we tried to focus it a little bit on the front line. If you've got anything that you think uh, that I didn't mention, make sure you leave it down in the comments. If there's anything that I can do better, please leave it down in the comments. Obviously, I'm new uh, to Beyond All Reason, even though I've, I've spent plenty of hours playing Total Annihilation. They're very different games, uh, and I'm I'm always open to feedback. So once again, thank you very much for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.